Okay, let's talk torque, not twerk, torque. Torque is when you apply a force around a rotational axis. So torque is the funky cursive T, and it is also measured in newtons times meter, so newton meters or a joule. Um, but it is force perpendicular to a distance. I'll squeeze it all in there. All right, so torque is equal to force perpendicular times distance. Um, this is important because we're talking about a rotational axis. So sometimes you'll see seesaws, and you can use torque for seesaws. Um, anytime you have swings, you can use torque on swings. You can also use them for doors um, and different things like that. And they're all the same formula. The reason that it's different from work is because it continues around this rotational axis. So as we increase the force up, this one goes down in a circular fashion. The same here. If I open a door, pushing it up, then it's going to continue around in a circle. The swing has two pivot points. So we have two pivot points here. So if this one breaks, then it will swing in a pivot. Um, so the pivot is very important. Um, <clears throat> generally, when we're talking about torque, you tend to use them in the application form of balancing. So when we do balancing, we come up with a net torque. So net torque is equal to torque one plus torque two, dot, dot, dot. So continuing on, so forth, so on and so forth. For instance, if I have a seesaw and I have Jimmy here and he is a um, certain distance D1 from the pivot point, and then I have Sally, who has a much smaller mass than Jimmy does. And Sally is being helped by her little brother, Tommy. And they're all different distances away from the pivot. Um, then we have to figure out how much torque um, Tommy and Sally have versus Jimmy. So here we come with our torque net, um, which if their their net torque is zero, then they are not moving. However, if Sally and Tommy are winning, then Jimmy is being propelled upward. So our nor uh, net torque, we have Jimmy, and he is applying a force down. And we also have Sally and Tommy that are both applying forces down. So they are opposing forces. Therefore, we have Jimmy, who's M1 times D1 times gravity. Um, and then he is maybe going in the opposite direction just because it's a lot easier. So it's negative. And then we're going to add him to Sally's and Tommy's. Since gravity is consistent throughout, we can actually get rid of gravity. Um, and then I want to move Jimmy over to the other side to see if he's going to win or not. So I have M1 D1 equals M2 D2 plus M3 D3. So it's possible to know right now because we don't know what the numbers are. But hopefully Sally and Tommy win because they're exerting more force. We don't know that for sure, but it never hurts to try.